All right. So, like I said, um, one of the things about doing cheat engine runs that I think saves a lot of time and helps with resets and stuff is just make a save file at the beginning of the game. So basically, like, I started um, my character... So, like, when you start the game in Dark Souls 2, you know, basically, uh, you start with, the like, the, the tattered clothes or whatever, and um, you don't have any weapon or anything. So, basically, I just traded one of my, uh, you know, the, the starting clothes. I think it was, like, the headpiece or whatever. And you just trade that for um, whatever weapon you want to cheat engine in. And then, basically, you just want to make sure that the durability is set correctly. And... Uh, yeah, that's easy. And then basically starting here uh, eliminates the argument that the first enemies in this area, like before you create your character's name and whatnot, um, that like no, no one gets hit there, right? But it's just, to me, it's better as like a, I don't know, to set the principle for runs forward that if you're going to do any cheat engine type run, make sure that you start at the beginning here. So either, you know, make a save file here or just do a new run and, you know, do the cheat engine in real time. But I don't know, for me, I just feel like it was really, really annoying when you're already like frustrated with resets to have to, I don't know, like cheat engine stuff in the beginning. And like I said, there is like room for for error and stuff. So um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like this idea. And then basically I just show my character and the stats. So I think that if you are doing a cheat engine run that you should, you know, show like your inventory, show your stats, um, just so people know that you haven't like added levels or anything like that. So also let me make sure this quality is good. Cause I feel like that this is, oh, this is source. Okay. But yeah, um, <clears throat> so like I said, basically, you know, once, once you're like, you know, go in here, then, you know, you'll start with the actual weapons. So that's the other thing is like, you'll have the great bow in your inventory, but you start with whatever class, you know, you would start with normally. So I'm going to choose swordsman. Also, don't ask, don't ask about this, guys. I have no clue. I, I, I had no control over the keyboard. Uh, chat basically wrote this in. This was actually a channel redemption. <laughs> but yeah, apparently it blessed the run. So shout out to Doofish. Um, all right. So yeah, so you see here, I'm taking off everything. So yeah, you start with the swords for swordsmen. It's not like you have the great bow in your hand still, but which is also kind of interesting. All right, so I usually always pick up the soul. Um, the reason I do is just a nice little uh, buffer, and also you get the torch, which is going to be helpful later for uh, flexile. So you probably don't need that, but I just think that it's uh, it's just it's one of those things where I'm like, why not? You know, I think it helps. All right, so yeah, the beginning of this is pretty much the same, and uh, for this tutorial, we're going to be doing Seldora route. So, I don't know, I might I might do a Shulva route, but with the vanilla guide, I feel like I did a pretty good job explaining about Shulva and stuff, so... Um, but yeah, so maybe for a future, but like I said, for this one, we're just going to be talking about Seldora, which is pretty much like the meta, which is ironic because it's non-meta, but... <laughs> like the meta, like, pathing of bosses, I would say Seldora route is probably the most popular, most common, so... I think that... I would recommend that for most non-meta runs. Shulva is good for like magic runs, but yeah. All right, so yeah, so we, you know, grab these souls. And I'll, I'll be grabbing a lot of those, these little tiny souls. So basically, um, like I said, for these uh, cheat engine runs, you wanna make sure that you, you know, so like you need to use consumables only on weapon only runs, right? So it's really good to learn how to do consumables only for, I would say like, you know, a third of this game, or at least mostly just the beginning, because it just helps so much um, when you're trying some of these harder runs, because 
I don't know, in my opinion, there are actually more consistent strats. Like, I, like I use throwing knives all the time. Um, and yeah, I, I just think that uh, some of these areas are just safer. Because, like, especially the enemy right in front of Last Giant can be a huge meme if you try to use, like, the rapier. And sometimes uh, they'll be aggroed early or they'll, like, you know, trade with you. Just, like, stupid little resets where if you just use, like, a throwing knife, you'll kill them 100% of the time. There's, like, zero room for error. So, yeah, and I, I do Dragon Rider, uh, Dragon Rider first here. But, you know, whatever is uh, more comfy. You could always do um, Cardinal Tower first. But, I don't know, I, I just think that it's easier just to do Dragon Rider first. Because I like to get the um, the Cat Ring before going to Cardinal Tower, so that way I can just do the uh, the branch skip right away. So. The Hollow is OP. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, that guy in front of uh, Last Giant is really, really annoying. All right, so here we're just going to do the Dragon Rider cheese, and yeah, there's nothing new for me to add compared to like any of my last tutorials. So if you want to see like, like I said, it's basically I think it's like six and a half steps. You can visually see like when he's basically like halfway through his uh, his step animation for that last step, like the sixth or seventh step or whatever. That's pretty much like all I would say is just like make sure you like visually know the cue, not just you know counting in your head. And uh, we'll kill uh, we'll kill Lucia, uh, like the miracle lady NPC. So we don't want her invading later. And you know, unless you're doing like a miracle only run, you don't need to keep her alive nine out of ten times. And I don't have homeward in this route, so um, I'm not really going to be talking too much about the homeward. Like, there's really no strats for homeward, right? You just homeward out, whereas others, forlorns, you have to obviously deal with it if you don't have a, have that option. So I'm going to be kind of covering... Eh, I'll cover a little bit of forlorn, but I, I'm actually probably not the best forlorn <laughs> expert. Um, so I'll probably actually leave that out of this tutorial because, yeah, there's certain parts that I'm just not even going <laughs> to attempt to know like I'm to what I'm talking about. I just kind of uh, do some of my runs based on statistics. I'm like, all right, if I probably won't get hit here, I guess I don't have to learn the forlorn strat. <laughs> but yeah, definitely watch Lone Wind's uh, forlorn guides. So I buy 10 skulls here, by the way. Um, just an update on this particular run. So I get uh, 10 skulls and cat ring. And then, like I said, we're able to uh, to do the branch skip. And since you're doing it right after Dragon Rider, it's early enough. And what's up, Sozo? Um, it's early enough to where uh, if you reset, it's no big deal. But honestly, like as long as you have baby jump mod installed, and that's another thing, if you don't have baby jump mod, there's a version for Scholar and Vanilla. And yeah, if you don't have it, just send me a message or something. I can uh, I can give you the links. But yeah, you want Baby Jump Mod because it's uh, it's it's allowed by Team Hitless Rules and it's pretty much like, why wouldn't you? It's not hard to install either, so. <clears throat> yeah, Lone Wind has very good uh, written guides as well. All right, so yeah, like I said, we're only using consumables uh, for this first probably 30 minutes of the run. So you'll see how I do consumables only. Um, so most of it is just, like I said, throwing knives and skulls. And then we do use fire bombs as well. So yeah, this beginning, like I said, other than the fact we don't have a weapon, <laughs> um, there's nothing different 
from uh, meta so far. Okay. So yeah, um, in vanilla you don't have to throw that skull, but in scholar you do, so just something to keep in mind. And you always want to rest at this bonfire, so that guy will meme. Um, and we, we're going to buy 21 throwing knives here, and this is all the throwing knives we need for the whole run. And I don't buy the key to the blacksmith. Um, but you might want to buy that and only buy five fire bombs if you're going to be doing um, a different run. And yeah, we just could do two throwing knives, kill him, get the witching urns. And like I said, I just backstep off of this because I think it's easier. But you can roll down there or just drop down. But just make sure you have enough space for when you're doing the, the run, the run up. Um, I don't know if I've if I've really talked about um, how to do this, it's like branch skip. It's really, really easy IMO, as long as you have a baby jump mod on. So like I said, when you're down here, so you can kind of see like everything. So um, there's like space over here. So if you kill these enemies, let's say you want to kill these enemies and actually like run up and practice and whatever. I usually start, I, I, so what I do is I, I go to this corner here, I aim, which I, like I said, it's going to be kind of bad for this footage, but yeah, basically you want to stay in this corner, aim to like around here, do, I believe, two or three back steps, and then you can start sprinting, and as long as you lined up correctly when you're in the corner, you'll jump, you know, the correct uh, area every time, so. So yeah, like right here is where you want to be, or probably like around here. So like I said, if, you, if you're here and you backstep, you run into this pole, actually this like pillar. So you want to be kind of like this, pointing this way, and then it's just one, two, three, I believe, back steps. And then you can sprint and jump, and it'll make uh, your lineups easier. I just have done this too many times, so to me, I just want to do it quickly. Alright, so I don't actually need to pop that soul. I don't know why, I'm just used to buying stuff. So that was just a, a little mental mistake. Alright, so we're going back to Majula, and we're going to kill Malin now that we have the five Witching Urns. So that so right now, what the, basically what we're doing is um, we're going to have you know RTSR, we're going to have um, the Seldora set. We have, we'll, we'll end up getting the 10, or the... Uh, the serpent ring plus one because we'll have enough souls um and you get all that before last giant so that way the last giant fight is a little bit more comfy and you get way more souls from it so you can uh start using the great bow earlier or whatever your cheat engine weapon that you're using so it's it's never a bad thing to get extra souls so you just want to make sure that you you have as, like all the soul boosting equipment before last giant, I would say is a really good rule of thumb. All right, so we get the shard as well. You don't have to get it, but I don't know, to me, I think if you're if you're not gonna unlock that the blacksmith and Majula, I think it's best to get all the Titanite shards that you can. So yeah, this, this strat that's coming up, it's really weird because I actually saw this strat first used by Nico in the Dark Souls 2 Pyro only, any percent no hit, and I didn't really think it actually worked, because <laughs> it looks sketchy, but basically if you punch this Basilisk um, while the door is opening, I would say like 99% of the time, Basically, the Basilisk will just like do the, the poison breath or the toxic breath or whatever. And it's really weird how consistent it is. But uh, I just think that you just want to make sure that the door... Yeah, that was actually really close. I threw my skull way too late there. Um, 
But yeah, so after you throw the second skull, like I said, Vasquez is sitting in front, you do one punch and then sprint. And uh, you, even if you get the meter to pop up, unless it actually procs, it's not a hit. So that's just something to keep in mind, because a lot of people don't know that the proc is the most important part for these, like, you know, poison, toxic hits. Alright, so, yeah, so we're going to use one more skull here, so we'll have four alluring skulls left. So like I said, this is pretty much your, your typical, like, meta running section. So yeah, and picking up that soul, you want to make sure that you're um, you're two-handing on your left side to pick up faster. It makes a big difference in that particular part, um, but in general, it just makes the run faster too. So use throwing knives to kill these guys. So like I said, no matter what your weapon-only run it run is, if you have to like get to the shaded woods or whatever. Um, like I said, the throwing knives are really, really important um, for these runs. So we're just grabbing RTSR, and like I said, I with my character, and um, I would say like any starting class that has really low iframes, it's better just to throw a skull because for some reason that ogre has such a huge hitbox, and on these like low iframe runs, it's just so trash. Like you get caught in the roll so many times. Um, and I use a throwing knife in these shaded wood sections, so that way I have a little bit more range, because I have gotten memed by the ghosts when you just punch every tree. So that's something I learned from doing like these consumable only runs, is throwing knife is way safer, and they're pretty cheap. I think they're only, only 100 souls per knife, so. And yeah, we're gonna talk, talk to Van Grohl here. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to pop my souls, so I popped these souls. But basically, you want to pop these three proud knight souls, and you'll have enough to be able to buy uh, 40 arrows. So for the Great Bow run, you need 40 arrows. Um, but if you're doing any other not non-meta run, I would say you probably just would uh, grab that soul at the top of the hill and then keep going like the way I'm going now. But for Great Bow, you need to get uh, Vengaro. So yeah, I'm just punching these trees because it's safe enough uh, for this section, but in the first part of these Shaded Woods, I think it's best to use throwing knives just from doing this for so long. So yeah, we're going to grab this ring. And uh, yeah, so we're... Almost done with the bow setup. So basically the whole time we've been doing the beginning of this run, we're just getting as many souls as we can. So we're unlocking areas and we're grabbing souls as we go through. And I would say for most runs, you'd be able to get um, the starting stats for your weapon by this point. I mean... I'm trying to think of how many souls I actually, or how many levels I actually get in total, but I think it'd be about 10 levels. One, one in strength, and I think you start with 15 or 16 decks. So, so yeah, you get enough souls for about 10-ish levels. So depending on how uh, you know, far apart your weapon stats are with uh, with what you're trying to use, or with your starting class, I think that uh, it should cover most most runs and if you let's say you needed to do more um and you needed more souls where you had to kill last giant or or and or pursuer um for last giant i would personally use fire bombs um or you could use throwing knives but it would just take a long time to kill with consumables or you can use actually i would use magic urns probably over fire bombs but either or that's what I would use to kill uh, Last Giant. And then you could do Pursuer, obviously, with uh, 
with no weapons with the Ballista Cheese, so... Yeah, if you're still short on souls after following this guide, um, that would be my next recommendation. Power Stand Smelter Hammers at this point. That would be an amazing run, actually, to see. Okay, so this here is a pretty common cheese. Um, so if you don't know this cheese, basically, you want to stand right by this um, this wall. It's like broken wall. So like right here, you don't want to be too close to the edge. You don't want to accidentally fall off. But as long as you're near this corner right here, and then you just aim. You don't have to have any stats to use the bow for like a tool purpose. So no matter the class that you're using, even if it's SL1, you can still at least fire the broken, you know, broken bow. Or it's not broken, but you know that you can't use it. And you won't do any damage, right? That's the thing is like the, the whole thing of not being able to use a weapon is you do no damage, but you can still use it um, for our purposes. So yeah, so you just want to use, like I said, depending on your run, obviously this is great bow, so I'm going to use a great bow, but you know, if you're using a bow as a tool, I would just use short bow. It's just, you know, it's literally like free. You get it in the chest, so. But yeah, you just want to shoot this ghost, and then basically they'll walk off the edge and just fall down and die. Um, and then when you're going around this corner, you just have to check for Forlorn. But if you don't get a Forlorn, um, then you can go ahead and open this uh, chest and grab the, the chunk. And then, like I said, this will allow us to get to plus 7 for Nashka, which in combination with uh, the good great arrows... You'll uh you'll be in good shape. So yeah, I have my homeward bone out for these parts. Because again, we're checking for forlorn. Uh the Great Bow has good durability. But uh Yeah, I haven't I haven't had I don't know if, if anyone for bow only or light crossbow only uh had to use uh what do you call it? Like the powder blacksmith powder or whatever to heal their weapons but all right so this part right here i'm not the best <laughs> at explaining like how to do this properly because i actually almost messed it up again but yeah basically you want to uh to like so i don't even know how to explain this well but the whole idea is that so these pots right here right when you stand near them, you start to get the curse effect. Um, so basically, there's a spot you can stand right here, where if you stand just at this like kind of corner, I don't know, it's it's a decent amount of area, but if you stand like right around here, you won't get the there's like the curse pots. Basically, there's a floor above you that has different curse pots, um, and obviously below you too. So yeah, you want to make sure that. You're standing here because if you do get the curse proc, that's a hit. Uh, but yeah, you just want to like backstep or walk off and aggro that ghost, run up these this ramp, come back around, wait till the ghost comes to the top of the ramp, backstep or roll not roll but walk down, and then you want to pick up that uh that soul while on, while using the um the two handed left slot so that way you can pick up faster. But that's the general idea, and then we're gonna, you know, do a jump to a, a next area and bone out. So the hardest part right now is just picking this up without getting hit, because obviously you're vulnerable when you're mid um, pickup animation. And then yeah, you just go to this spot and bone out. But this jump isn't too bad. It does look kind of scary at first, and I don't know. I actually haven't fallen in the sand pit in a long time, so I think if you fell in the sand pit, you'd have to either bone out or just like run and hope you don't get shot. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, so we're popping these souls. So basically now that we have all these souls, um, that we picked up for the last 20 minutes. We have 24,000 souls, so like I said, that should be enough to uh, to level. 
Oh, wow, Chris. Alright, so yeah, so 10, 10 strength and 25 dex is the stats needed to use a lawn scrape bow. Uh, like I said, whatever your your weapon only run is, then yeah, you can go ahead and level to that. And if you do have extra souls, I would say to either buy bright bugs, um, like an extra bright bug if you could afford it, or maybe buy some extra homeward bones, or throwing knives is not a bad idea. All right, so yeah, so I I get one. Uh, so in total, what we got was we got one, or we got 21 throwing knives, we got one bright bug, and 11 fire bombs, and that was enough to get spend 10,000 because I didn't get the uh, the key like to the the blacksmith in Majula. So um, if you needed to spend 10k, I think that's a pretty uh, pretty good choice. All right. So yeah, so now we're using the Great Bow. And these four rings are pretty much going to be your bread and butter. Except for obviously we'll change out the Ring of Blades for uh, for the Cat Ring. Alright, so I'm setting up RTSR. Now I actually <laughs> told myself I was going to learn like the one drop uh, strat and I just never did. But... Yeah, depending on your starting class, there's different um, different uh, levels. So I think for this character, it's uh, three vigor, and then you know SL one is six. So depending on your uh, amount of health, you just need to be careful on these drops. I usually do these tinier ones uh, just to be safer. But yeah, if for this particular character, if you just walk off that edge. Because that's normally how you set it up with Explorer. You'll actually die. <laughs> so you got to be uh, got to be careful on which uh, starting classes can do some of these quick RTSR setups. All right. So here, like I said, this is like meta. You just want to stick to this wall, and you won't aggro the hollow on the left with the bow. All right. So I grab these things again. Nothing wrong with getting torches, and you can sell these shard, this Estus shard. And I always pick up these like blossoms. Um, it's up to you. And then again, fire bomb for the barrels. Okay, so I use throwing knives on these guys, even in like my meta runs. So it's up to you. Um, you could also use great bow arrows, but I just think that since they're so expensive, each arrow, um, it's better just to use throwing knives. But and I don't think uh, actually I don't know if the great bow will one shot them. I think they will, but actually no, I don't think they one shot them. So yeah, it's just a throwing knife I think is quicker in between shots, so it's safer. Alright, so here again I use the throwing knife on this um, this hollow. This 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 hollow is a meme. That's all I'm gonna say. Just use throwing knives, don't ask why. It's just that hollow is a meme waiting to happen. And it can happen probably like one out of a hundred times. Or one out of fifty times. And it's just something you don't want to deal with. Alright, so Basically, we we waited for the last giant to do its scripted opener, and then we run, ran in between the legs. And that's all you're gonna do here is just run between the legs, and uh, and shoot. And this is the same for like bow only, um, like a lot of the magic non-meta no hit runs will do this as well, where you just use range to your advantage. It does take longer, but if you're doing spell casting or um, you know really slow ranged weapons like the Great Bow and Crossbow Runs. This is the best strat IMO because it's just safe. The only thing that that you have to watch out for is, for me, it, the Great Bows use a bunch of stamina. I don't know if you, you'll notice it obviously throughout the run, but I run out of stamina every time I fire a shot. So in Dark Souls 2, when you run out of stamina, you're unable to roll or sprint 
for, you know, a few seconds as like a punishment. So that's why I'm firing the great bow early, waiting for my stamina to uh, replenish. And then I can just run to the other side, rinse and repeat. So. And again, if you're doing like a melee close range, non-meta weapon only, just I would just stick to the left leg and or left foot and just do the kind of the meta strap. Doesn't really change for weapon only runs. So I'm just going to two times this because it, this this next part is going to be um, the same as well for meta and non-meta in terms of the uh, the pursuer. It's just the scripted ballistic kill, and I kill these uh, these hollows coming up with uh, throwing knives and a combination of great bow. Hey, what's up, Frazzle? And uh, it's up to you what you're most comfy with. I think that the throwing knives are really nice, but um, if you want to use melee, just you know, be careful <laughs> because these uh, these enemies have really, really weird follow-ups and surprisingly decent range on some of their attacks. Alright, um, so yeah, and if you use throwing knives to kill this hollow, it takes two. You just want to throw one, wait till um, they fire the, the bow, and then you can throw the second one, and it's 100% consistent. You just gotta be uh, right on the timings. Alright, so there's Pursuer, and we also want to make sure we equip Ring of Blades. Um, Ring of Blades adds significant amount of damage. And this next part is also, uh, you know, there's really no difference between this and the other uh, tutorials. So yeah, basically we just um, drop down, make sure you have cat ring on if you're using RTSR. So grab this, drop down, walk by the chest, just wait in this corner. You can pop a soul while you're waiting. This pursuer will despawn. You can pick up the chest, which has the serpent ring and the branch. And uh, you can bone out. <clears throat> and I would say this part coming up um, is also pretty much meta. Since we have a great bow, normally I use like the short bow and kill these uh, jailers. But it's nice with the great bow because you do get um, some staggers and stuff. Yeah, Chris, that attack is super annoying. So make sure you pick up the antiquated key and all these chests. Just don't miss them because, uh, yeah, we are going Seldora route, so Flexile. And, uh, yeah. Alright. So, yeah, I just bow these guys. Uh, make sure this right here. So we're going to be checking for Forlorn right now. Um, Forlorn is one of the reasons why I lost my run. <laughs> but yeah, this Forlorn's really nasty. So basically, uh, what I learned is there is a delay when your Homeward Bone will gray out, which means you can't use it in Forlorn's Invading. So that's how, if it isn't clear already, how to check for Forlorn 101. You want to either use Homeward Bone or Aged Feather, which both um, will you know, essentially do the same thing and, and teleporting you to the last bonfire um you want to have this item out because like i said if forlorn invades this will go gray which means that uh you can't use it and this will happen before you get the actual message that forlorn is invading you so that's why everyone always has their homeward bones out um and right here yeah so you just want to make sure you're like not too close because let's say you come here and you are getting invaded by forlorn if you aggro this jailer and have forlorn you're dead <laughs> um, so you want to make sure that you kind of slowly walk forward and you get to this point um, which is about like I don't know like two or two or three feet behind this 
Jailer, so yeah. If I was invaded, boom, this would gray out right now. But it's not, so I know I'm safe. I even do like a couple safety <laughs> steps. And now, like, I'm way past the um, the threshold to activate Forlorn, so. Alright, so yeah. Uh, so this part's pretty much straightforward. And then, after we kill this uh, Jailer, we're just going to be using a Firebomb on one of the uh one of the dogs you can also just use your weapon it's up to you um i'm used to doing the firebomb and then i use the great bow arrow for the last one hey what's up shoki so yeah um just, you just want to kill these enemies these dogs before you activate or roll the barrel it's just more consistent. It is slower, but if one of the dogs survives or your barrel doesn't explode and it aggros those dogs, it can be really sketchy. Hey, what's up, Shoki? <laughs> Alright. Um, so, yeah. So, in these chests, like I said, there's there's arrows, there's, uh, there's bolts, and then these uh, shards. So, you always want to get the shards. And uh, depending on, obviously, what r run you're doing, it would be good to get the arrows if you're using the short bow as a tool. Um, other than that, I don't think you really need them unless you're doing crossbow only and or bow only. So I pick up 100 um, of these iron great arrows. And like I said, I got 40 of the, um, the explosive great arrows or whatever they're called, destructive great arrows. And then I upgrade my weapon to plus seven because you just need two more large titanite shards if you did all my pickups in this uh, video. Is it my first world first? Uh, yeah, my first, first official one, yeah. Second unofficial one, I guess. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, again... I'm upgrading endurance because I'm using the uh, the great bow for other. I would say for other bow runs, you still want to do obviously a lot of endurance, and I make sure that I level ADP whenever I can, just because I don't know. Having those extra iframes makes a huge difference, especially in non-meta runs, because I feel like you have to deal with a lot more um, enemies, or they just are alive longer, right? Since you're dealing less damage than the rapier. <clears throat> Say your name in the VOD. Alright, so we're going to do Nashka now. And I'm just setting up RTSR with gravity. So I'll show you guys how to do RTSR with uh, gravity setups. Because I don't. Do, we aren't doing Shulva, so we don't have the Sanctum Mace. But if you have the Great Bow in your hand... Um, I think it takes three drops and you'll be in RTSR range. So I would say three should work for um, for all non-meta runs. If your weapon's really, really light, like it's like a dagger only or something, then you can just put on your armor and that'll increase your fall damage. So here I have the Homeward Bone out because we're checking for Forlorn. Um, we're on our way to Nashka. Again, we have a plus seven weapon, which you should be able to get in your... Um, Weapon only runs. So, plus seven. We have RTSR. We have Ring of Blades. And we're not going to use a Bright Bug here. Because um, we're going to be doing the Range Cheese, which you can use for magic runs, bow only, or crossbow only. Um, so, like I said, I have my fists out and my Homeward Bone. So I wait for this. I punch Nashka because sometimes Nashka won't go under the sand if you don't uh, aggro her. And I don't like, you know, doing the the uh, crossbow, I guess, like plunge or whatever. So, and you're allowed to use your fists and weapon only runs. So yeah, just do that. Um, you just got to guide her to these branches, which takes a lot of practice. Um, I guess the best way to describe this 
how to do this cheese is so like I said, you you're always safe behind this tree. So that's why I always go there because she she has a scripted opener, right? She'll always fire that first um, soul spear. And I just spin around in circles and then start to walk away. And then I think that helps uh, lower the chance of her ranged magic attacks. Because if you start running too soon when you're trying to set her up in the cheese, like this attack right here, she'll do this like right at the start. And if she does that, you just want to homeward bone out. It's not worth it. Um, you're probably going to lose your run if you have to deal with her without the cheese. But yeah, basically the whole idea is that uh, Nashka's hitbox is too big to fit through these two trees. So she can get unstuck if you stagger her or sometimes she'll just slip through. Um, but yeah, if you're doing this, you can also use fire bombs um, or throwing knives and you can um, you can kill her this way as well. But with the great bow, it's I'm using my um, strongest arrows, which is the destructive great arrows with RTSR, and you have enough to uh, to get through this. So. It should be pretty easy. And like I said, let's say she burrows, because sometimes she will burrow if you don't have enough damage. Um, you just want to stand on that one platform in the middle of the arena that she can't uh, pop up in. And then either you can try to go back to the cheese spot and have her chase you, or you could just fight her straight up and do the tail strats. But again, that would be meta. So that was just kind of like a quick uh, tutorial on, on how to do that cheese. All right, so... Um, See. Yeah, I don't like Godskin duo fight either. <laughs> I do like the the fact that at least we can use sleep, but yeah, it's not a huge fan of that boss. All right. Uh, so yeah, this is all like pretty much meta right here. So nothing new. Um, when you do this, when we do the congregation split, uh, congregation with bow only, crossbow only, great bow only, they're all very very difficult. So my best advice would be really, really learn how to do the attack or how to like, how to, how to do the fight with just staying alive. Cause basically um, how I, how I approach this is I want to make sure that I kill the first priest or cleric immediately. And then I slowly am working towards killing the other cleric. Cause again, the cleric can heal. Um, so we want to get them killed as soon as possible and then after that it's just dodging uh magus's hex attacks and also obviously dodging the hollows so uh, right here i actually messed up and uh did the the boulder terribly in terms of getting the hollows in position to be killed by the boulder and so i just uh boned out and reset this area but i would say if yeah, if you're doing a, a melee weapon only, it's probably best to make sure that you kill as many uh, hollows with that boulder just to make it easier for you. Because, like I said, these uh, these hollows are really or these peasants are very very uh, tricky when it comes to no hit with only melee. <laughs> I've been I've lost a run to these to these peasants several times. All right, so this is a little bit better. I think two are still alive. Yeah, so I only killed two out of the four, but that was fine. I just kept going. But yeah, so like I said, um, we'll kill all these peasants, and then once you get past these two, there's two on the hill or on that uh, upper area platform. So you want to kill those two peasants as well, and then you're safe because basically the peasants are designed to be like a trap and an ambush. So if you keep going towards congregation, they'll drop off the cliff and and stab you in the back. All right, I'm just fast forward through here. So yeah, so we'll do the congregation fight. Um, like I said, 
the key thing for Congregation is just only only attack when you really can because uh, most of the time what you're just trying to do is get Magus to do the AoE attack and then be far enough away from uh, from the prisoners or hollows to shoot or you know melee the cl the cleric. So all right, let's go back to normal. So yeah, I use the bright bug for this fight, but like I said, depending on how much damage you're doing, you could use the bright bug for Nashka instead. Um, but my strat here again is just to go through this pathing. I saw that Magus was doing an AOE. So I had to give a little bit more space, but I fired two great bow arrows into this cleric. I have to dodge that. The bench saved me on this other attack. Um, the, pri the prisoners are coming towards me, so I have to keep moving. Um, it's two a or there's an AOE from Magus. So you just have to basically, you just want to assess what's going on at <laughs> almost all times. So, like I said, I'm I'm running from uh, these hollows while also dodging magic attacks. It is uh, a great time. <laughs> but yeah, your camera is your biggest enemy for this fight. I'm not using claw because I'm a scrub, but if you're using claw, this fight's much easier. But yeah, you just want to make sure that you're always seeing what uh, Magus and the Cleric are doing. And... After you kill the second cleric, you can either kill these prisoners or you can kill Magus first. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure, especially with something like Great Bow that has such a long animation, that you always kill whichever one's more of a threat. Which 9 out of 10 times is going to be the, uh, the prisoners of the hollows. Alright, so now I just have to dodge one more hex. And then I want to trigger the AoE before I punish. So that way I have an even uh, more time of an opener. And then after you've killed Magus and everything else, it's just the crawlers. Obviously just give yourself space and the crawlers are easy. So yeah, that's a uh, non-meta... Well, yeah, I guess non-meta um, congregation. And this next part is, I'm also going to just fast forward through because this is just like meta. Um, so there's really not much to comment on here. And if you guys have any questions, obviously, yeah, let me know in the chat. And I'll, you know, I'll address them as they come. So yeah, so after Congregation, like I said, I we have some more levels, so you can definitely level um, after Congregation. And before Flexile, I um, just want to make sure that we have, we end up buying one Bright Bug. So I use uh, a Bright Bug on Flexile. It's a pre pretty tricky boss um, with low damage. And 20 ADP is really comfy, I would say, for Flexile, so... I'd recommend going uh, for that level. And yeah, like I said, this is uh, the congregation route. So obviously we did congregation. Um, you can do either flexile or you could do ruin sentinels. So if you want to do sentinels, uh, you know, that's completely fine. But I think that uh, flexile is is much easier obviously on great bow um but yeah the uh the sentinels would be a faster route so just to throw that out there so yeah so now we have all the upgrades to be able to get one weapon to plus 10. And since we're doing a weapon only run, at this point you should have enough uh, materials if your weapon is a, a Titanite shard, um, normal Titanite path. If you're doing twink, 
Twinkling Titanites for your weapon only, I would honestly suggest doing Shulva. And yeah, if we if we people want it, I can do another guide on kind of like how to get Twinks and Shulva. So I actually don't know if anyone's really done like a specific Shulva only kind of guide. Um, Yeah, the DS or the what is going on? I don't know if I was just taking a break. <laughs> but, all right, so yeah, so I buy the bright bug, um, so we can use it on flexile. And then I'm gonna upgrade my weapon to plus ten. So like I said, any weapon you're using should be able to be plus ten at this point. And then I think I buy like 40, 20 more arrows. So I don't know. I I, I bought I had these like weird air instances where I bought more arrows. So I was worried about like not having enough. But um, yeah, you can buy however many arrows you think. Or if you're doing just normal weapon only, it doesn't really apply. But just throwing out there, you always want to make sure you have enough uh, bolts and arrows. Because sometimes you're not used to checking that. If you're used to doing melee only runs so just make sure you're in the habit of keeping an eye on your uh your arrow counts or bolt counts all right so we're gonna do flexile so th the main thing that you don't want to forget is you always 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 want to buy these poison throwing knives so make sure you have enough souls if you have to sell souls that's fine too or sell items but make sure you have i think for 20 it's around like six thousand eight thousand something like that um but yeah, 20 poison throwing knives, they're pretty much free, if you're doing flexile, of course. Um, there's no reason to not get them, especially for non-meta. They come in handy on a few bosses, and I'll kind of explain that later. Depending on how hard your run is, um, it might be worth, uh, worth using. Alright, so like I said, we pick up the Proud Knight, Soul, and some of the other items that we're going to sell. And run past that guy all right i pop souls in this because it's nothing to do but just wait in this elevator um and like i said for, for no man's wharf this is also like a traditional meme spot um because there are these ninjas and other kind of uh meme enemies all right so let me slow this down uh, Alright, so for No Man's Wharf, you want to make sure that you kill this enemy right here, who's going to be like sleeping or AFK. Kill. It doesn't really matter the order here at all, but just make sure you kill all four of these enemies. That one's hanging off the, the dock, this enemy. There, so there's four enemies you got to kill. You want to come back. Activate the torch again. We got those two torch pickups in the beginning of the run. So I think we have, what, 10 minutes? We have 15 minutes because yeah, we got the Sildor one too. So so yeah. Um, you have 15 minutes of torch time, which is plenty. And I have one Alluring Skull left. So make sure that uh, you have one skull for this part. You don't have to do this with a skull, but it's more consistent. Um, I throw the skull right here. You'll notice there's that um, enemy that was starting to get up. So just make sure you throw it pretty timely. Um, this dog will jump at you, but as long as you run at that angle, you won't get hit. And again, with the torch out, these enemies are afraid. Alright, and then you're done with torch. And you want to buy these uh, poison knives. 7,000. So you need 7,000 souls. And then I just sell everything I'm not using. Just why not? You don't have to sell. It depends. If you're trying to do like a speed run, don't sell stuff, but. Alright, so now we're going to kill 
you know, these two enemies. So this part right now, like, the rest of this should be pretty much meta. Um, again, you can use the bow as a tool to activate the, um, the bell if you're doing a weapon-only run. But you just gotta be careful of these, uh, enemies, so... You may end up have, having to go, uh... Up the, uh... The intended way, I guess. Alright, so I'm waiting for this, uh... The ship to come. And then, basically, I have Cat Ring on. And I can make this jump without dying with RTSR already set up. Um, and I switch rings, so I get so I go from the cat ring to the serpent ring. And then I'm going to use a bright bug on this dock as well. And no one should be following you if you lined up correctly when you did that first jump. And then, like I said, um, you bright bug early because this enemy up here starts to aggro, so you don't have time to bright bug before the fog wall. You'll get hit. So that's why we bright bug on the dock. And then, like I said, depending on if you're doing melee only or ranged only, you'll there's two sides of flexile. Um, the mace side will normally aggro to you if you're doing melee only. If you're doing magic or ranged or consumables only, um, this... Uh, the curved sword side will be to you just like it is here for me. Um, and there's one attack that we're consistently trying to bait out. And it was weird because I actually got the mace side more for this particular run. Uh, but normally, like, it's 90% of the curved sword side. And that attack that we just had, that's the one you want to keep baiting. So you, so you want to be kind of like mid range. I was too far there, so that's why. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why Flexile did that. And I made a mistake there. I shouldn't have punished. That's why that was so close for that roll. But right here, that attack right there, it's a it's a close range um, punishment. But if you um, if you sprint, you can no roll it. And if you want to be extra safe, you can sprint and roll. But you just want to keep looping that attack, and you should be good. And like I said, if you're doing melee only. Um, I would just stick with the mace side, and that's meta. But if you're going to do ranged, that's how you want to deal with flexile. All right, so I'm going to also kind of fast forward through this because this next part is pretty much meta as well. Uh, so there's not really too much to explain. The one thing you want to make sure is that you're checking for forlorn right here. So if you don't get your um, your bone to gray out when you're at that ledge, then you're good. But you just don't want to like run because if you drop off that ledge and you get forlorn, you're screwed. Hey, what's up, Anders? Welcome in. And these two dogs can be a meme, so just be careful if you're doing melee. I would recommend having firebomb out so that way you can. Uh, you can throw it at the barrels next to the door if you make a mistake. Alright, so we're going to grab this Bonfire Ascetic and then out. So that's all three. So we got three Bonfire Ascetics. Um, the one we started with, the one from Congregation, now the one from Flexile. So we can start doing Rotten Times 4. Depending on how much health you have. So for this character, we need the Blue Sentinel Ring. Um, so <clears throat> I think that... Uh, if you're, depending on your starting class, like I think if you're Explorer, you don't need it. 
Um, but if you have any class that's less than six, or six or less, I would say, if you have six or less, six or less vigor, then I would recommend you get the blue sentinel ring that I do here. Yeah, so those are the the great arrows are weird. <laughs> So I think I ended up buying Homeward Bones first. Um, I should have grabbed the Sentinel Ring and then gotten Homeward Boats after, but... But yeah, it's all good. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to skip through this. Oh, I took a break. That's what it was. I was going to say, I was like, what am I doing here? Alright, um, so yeah, like I said, so the next part is the gutter, which is actually, surprisingly has been a meme to me for some reason the last two weeks but yeah you just want to be really careful through the gutter because there, there are certain hollows that are just waiting to to fuck you over so you want to make sure that your gutter running section is scripted so you can follow what i do um, or you can experiment there's other like faster ways to do the gutter so So I'm buying more great arrows, um, just because I, I thought I was kind of low for the rottens. So depending on how many souls you have, just make sure you buy all the bright bugs though before you do rotten, because that is a reset points, or that's where the the bright bug re replenishes. I guess you get three new ones is after rotten. So you want to make sure you buy the first three before rotten, so that way you don't lose them. Because once you do rotten, those bright bugs are gone forever if you didn't buy them. So yeah, for this drop, make sure you drop into the well on this side that was closest to the cat. And you don't have to pick up like half the stuff. I just, I don't know, I'm weird. I feel like I've been picking up the same stuff for like two years when I don't even use it. <laughs> so yeah, just make sure your health is all the way, especially than this character. Look how much are we lose our health. It's pretty small. <laughs> what's left so just be careful when you're using these life gems be patient don't uh don't rush this section and uh i guess i can comment through the gutter just where where i'd made mistakes but this is the same as meta so i don't know i kind of want to fast forward through this but i'll go over it i guess for this uh this area where the disc chime is Again, if you're doing Miracle only, this is where you do the Disc Chime Jump. Uh, you normally would kill this Blizzard as well because it has a Dark Stone. That's very important for a lot of meta runs. Um, or Hex. Alright, so we kill that one Hollow. The Explodey Hollow. And then there's these next two, and if, like I said, the reason I rolled over here is to get the Homeward Bones and also you have a better angle when you're using range on these enemies. Alright, so yeah, I, I go slow here and just make sure that I'm not running and I'm just walking off these cliffs. 
of the platforms because it's really easy to slide and you can die from fall damage even with cat ring. Alright. Now there are five dung pies in the gutter. So I'll I'll show you where they are. So the first two are on the left here. It's in this pot. You just want to roll into it, or you can melee it or you know, attack it. Um, I usually rest after grabbing the dung, dung pies. You can keep going. I don't know. For me, it's kind of a... I like to reset the enemy positions before I uh, continue in the gutter to make it more consistent. So you just want to keep sprinting by these two. Make sure you drop exactly where I dropped off there. You can roll this hollows fire attacks because it can be kind of close, but most of the time you can no-roll it. Um, there is a chunk that I just passed, but we already have plus 10 weapons. So if you're doing a weapon only, you don't need that chunk if you followed my guide until now. Um, there is an Estus Shard, Estus Flash Shard, and a, I believe, a Proud Knight sold on this next platform. So you can grab both, um, but I just really need the souls. So that's all I grab. And you just want to make sure you don't sprint on this platform or else you can aggro this hollow up here. So I always kill or you can push it, push that hollow off the cliff. And yeah, just make sure you take it slow here because it's really easy to slide off these uh, bridges. So I kill this one and this one. You can also run around this enemy if you're doing melee weapon only and the hollow will uh, will jump off the bridge if you angle it correctly. You kill this hollow right here that's next to the poison arrow. So if you are using a bow only, you definitely want to grab these poison arrows on the left. They're free. Um, the, the next and the last three dung pies are coming up right here. So I kill this, um, this enemy and then there's another one that comes around that corner you see entering now. So we're winding up our great bow. I miss because I'm a scrub. Um, you want to uh, bait out an attack and then you punish after. They're very quick, so you got to be careful. And then these are the last three dung pies, so pick these up. Okay. And then I slide down here and then sprint off this ledge at this angle. Kind of land near these two pots. Be aware of that uh, hollow to the left with the dark dagger. Um, I got killed by <laughs> that hollow in the last run before this, so. Or, yeah, or yesterday, I don't remember. Or two days ago, so. Um, all right. And the gulch should be uh, pretty meta here for what I do. I'll explain this because I feel like that um, I've seen newer runners having a really hard time with the gulch. So I'll go through this in depth because I feel like I definitely didn't go through it in depth in the um, in the vanilla one because I was doing sentinels times four, so I don't do run times four. But so I'll I'll go into to detail for this real quick for you guys. So it doesn't really matter what rings you have on. Actually, I don't want to do that slow. But basically, there's a, a line that you need to follow to a T. And if you follow this, Forlorn is literally free. Like, there's no issue if you get made by Forlorn. If you do this running section, how I do it. If not, if you're killing uh, each of those statues, you're going to probably die to Forlorn at some point. Can we not? Okay. So, let's see right here. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're going to line up. So right here, there's three statues here and there's two statues here, right? Depending on the angle, like if I were to go like this on my line and go hug too close to the left at the start and then go towards the right, you can get hit by these statues because they're all, if you look at like the way that they're all uh, lined up, they make it so it's really, really precise on the exact angle and um, where you sprint versus where you're walking. So if you see, I do this a lot of times when I line up for doing like parkour or anything. 
So you want to first walk your character backwards. And then you want to turn around and then look. Like, I feel like it's better to make sure that you have, uh, you know, your character straightened up while you're going backwards. And then you just do a little turn. And they can start walking forward and see if this looks correct. So I want to, so I kind of line up visually with this statue here. So I make it so that I'm kind of like this. And if you look, you're on like a slight angle to the right, but it's pretty straight for the most part. It's just, you don't want to like curve. Like the way that the path, like the, the shading and everything, it makes you want to do this curve, but you don't want to do that. You want to go on a straight line, but you just want to be on a, like a slight angle. And you'll see me do it here. So I'm lining up with this statue and look at this the line I'm doing also. So this is the line and they all miss you here, here. You sprint this way. Then you wanna stop sprinting, regain your stamina and then sprint here. And you wanna be right here and then you turn, keep sprinting using stamina, keep sprinting around that statue and then you sprint off. You don't have to roll or anything, just sprint. And as long as you sprint, um, off the correct part of the ledge. You'll land on this ledge, no problem. You can plunge um, to land on this next section, or you can walk off like I did. And I actually did get invaded by Forlorn, and look, no problem at all. So I'll go through that one more time, just, to, just so you guys can see. And I'll slow it down. But this is 100% consistent. You have to make sure you line up correctly here, though. This is where everyone gets hit. It's this very first part, and that's why they don't want to fucking learn it, because they like try the first part and they can't even get the first part. So then they're like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll go like Hob old school. And it's like, no, just don't. <laughs> don't do that to yourself. Please, please, please learn the strat. It's after you learn it, it just makes every run a million times less stressful because you're halfway like resetting to these statues is just devastating, you know? Okay. Stop sprinting, regain stamina. Start sprinting. Keep sprinting. Stop sprinting. Keep sprinting. And that's it. For this next part, um, so you want to have fire bombs. If you, you're doing bolt only, then you should have had the five, I think it's ten uh, fire arrows from the, uh, the Cardinal Tower, last giant area. So you can use either or. Um, there are no fire great bows. There are fire crossbow bolts, but you have to unlock uh, Ornifix, so I don't know if you'll have them at this point. I haven't done that run yet. But fire bombs work. Again, consumables only. You're allowed to use it for these weapon only runs. Um, so you want to make sure you light that tar pit, this, the one that's closest that Forlorn's right next to, as, it, as you see there's the enemy that came out of it. Um, so I did get invaded by Forlorn. Um, it's Safer just to kill Forlorn, but you can also just run and sprint past. But I would advise just killing. Unless you have a very, very low damage run and it's melee only, then I think you have no choice but to either wait 15 minutes to despawn Forlorn, or you're just going to have to wait till Forlorn's in a good position for you to be able to jump off the cliff the way I'll show you soon. Um, so we can just fast forward. You don't need to see me kill Forlorn. Yeah, Forlorn was, like, trolling me a lot today. <laughs> or yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there we go. Um, so yeah, GG, Forlorn's dead. Um, and now we're gonna uh, make sure that we line up again. Go backwards before you go forwards. Jump. Sprint around this pool. Sprint here. Um, make sure you follow that that path. I'll, I'll show it one more time at a slower speed. But like I said, you want to go back, 
line up, move forward, sprint, and then jump. You want to be right next to this poison pool, so you want to land a route right here. So land, recover stamina, then start sprinting now. You want to go on kind of this angle to the left, you'll dodge all these poison spits. Keep going this way. Watch out for these two. See this poison spit? You want to watch for that one. And then you're right next to the fog wall. And then you're invaded, but you're plenty of time to be able to uh, to get through. So we'll just two times this rotten stuff because um, basically all, what I do is I just do the speed run strat of no roll rotten. And then um, fire one great bolt. And if you're doing bow only, um, you could probably do like two punishes. Crossbow only is probably one as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done those particular runs, but just make sure that if you have something or a weapon that does, it's either really slow or uses a lot of stamina, it's best not to roll and then punish because rolling costs a lot more stamina than if you were to just sprint and dodge. So, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to probably just skip these this rotten stuff because it's just so long. But nice. if you do need uh, if you do need help with uh, with rotten, why is this network error? It's weird. So, 20 minutes of Rotten later. Alright, so we do our, our final leveling. So, I would say just make sure that... Uh, just make sure they have 32 ADP. So, I would say... Um, Having 105 agility for non-meta is just really comfy. If you really, like, let's say you're, if you're doing magic runs, obviously you want to have more attunement than ADP since you're also leveling agility by leveling attunement. Um, but if you're doing like a melee only or ranged only, I would recommend having 32 ADP by the time you start Shrine of Winter. Um, that's just me. And like I said, having high endurance makes everything easier for bow only. Great bow only and crossbow only. You want to have around 40 endurance at this point. Um, and then level what else, whatever you need in terms of strength and dex if you're doing a, a weapon only run. You want to buy the bright bugs if you have the souls right now. If not, you just want to make sure you buy the bright bugs before Mirror Knight. That's the next reset point for the bright bugs. All right, so I think this is, yeah, this is the end of uh, part one. Okay. All right, so, uh, so we'll keep going with part two. So yeah, so the Shrine of Winter, it took us two hours. Um, you could probably get this down to like an hour and a half with uh, some speedier strats. But yeah, I would say around two hours is, uh, is the most you'd want to be starting Shrine of Winter. All right, so let's... I feel like I spent a lot of time stalling. All right, so yeah, so we're in Shaded Woods. Um, 
And again, I have about 400 arrows, so just make sure that whenever when you're starting this next uh, running section, that you have plenty of uh, plenty of arrows if you're doing a, a bow only run, because you do kill quite a quite a lot of enemies. So this little spot I actually learned recently works, but I can't guarantee it's 100 percent consistent. But most, because like, I don't know, I, I just don't know. I haven't spent enough time, but it works for me um, on the great bow. But yeah, I just want to make sure that you're careful because those those arrows that, uh, that Falconer fires can get really close, even when you stand in that kind of cheese spot. So even for, especially for melee only, this works as well, the strat I'm going to show. So you just want to kind of run in circles and sprint as you turn back and you can get a punish off um, ranged or melee. If you're doing ranged, uh, make sure that for the second shot, they have a bunch of iframes as they're getting up from after being uh, knocked down. Make sure that they do the step back or the jump back before you shoot your, um, your arrow or else you will miss because that back step actually will dodge uh, ranged attacks. And this you can, I, I missed that arrow, but most of the time, um, you can uh, shoot the falconer either in the head, and it'll be a one shot, or you can uh, just shoot twice before it even gets close. But yeah, if for some reason you miss your shot like I did, you can just walk back. All right, now this next section, I'm very superstitious about this ghost because this ghost <laughs> ended one of my runs um, a while ago, but. If you stand near this rock and wait for the ghost, the ghost will start going towards this corner and that's the perfect time uh, to be able to sprint and you'll never aggro the ghost. It's very, very rare, but sometimes you'll aggro that ghost if you're too close when you're running by. So that's my 100% super peach version, but it's definitely not necessary. Um, it's just I spent two hours getting this point, so I didn't want to lose my run to something stupid. All right, um, so Shrine of Winter, like I said, make sure you popped all your souls so that way you can get through here without um, needing to pop them outside the door. And obviously you want as many levels before you start this. I'm going to set up RTSR. This is the super safe way to set up RTSR. There is a way for you to only need to jump twice or even once depending on uh, the strat. But if you want a peachy way, you can't screw this up because the wall that I'm jumping into is too tall. Oh, nice, got some bots. <laughs> um, the wall that we're jumping into um, is too tall to be able to accidentally jump over. So um, it basically allows you to only take a little bit of damage at a time, um, so. Yeah, if you're if you're worried, like I said, if you're like me and you're, I don't know, not super comfortable doing speedrun strats, I think this is a nice alternative. But regardless of how you set up RTSR, you just want to make sure you have RTSR for this next section. And if you're doing non-meta weapon only, I think that's even more important, or melee only, because um, you want to make sure that you can kill. Uh, these soldiers and and whatnot at you know one or two hits. So now we have RTSR. Uh, normally, like especially with the bow only, you want to um, try to kill this first ghost that you'll see. I end up missing my second shot in this particular run, so I had to do kind of the scarier strat. But if you aim correctly, you actually can uh, kill both ghosts without even having to deal with, uh, you know, running past one or both. Okay, so I don't know why I'm stalling. 
Yeah, so basically, um, what you want to do is you want to shoot these ghosts when they're kind of in the middle and going in the upward direction. Because basically, when they get hit, they're obviously going to aggro towards you, and if you get them in the middle, they'll run kind of more of a straight line down. Like, here's a good example. I don't know how that didn't even hit him. But yeah, for some reason I missed, but yeah, the, the way that the ghost was was sprinting in the direction is exactly how you want it. Just for some reason I missed the great bow shot, so you have to constantly or consistently hit uh, shots back to back or else the ghost will slip by. Um, and this was kind of scary because I hit the wall and I have to dodge this crossbow, but yeah, just be careful. When you're running by, you want to have your camera always on these ghosts. But yeah, this running section is so scary. Okay. Um, so this next part, again, with the bow only... Just want to make sure that uh, you get headshots if you can, and these crossbow bolts are super quick, so just be very, very careful with these first two soldiers. It's really, really easy to lose a run. All right, so yeah, I'm just killing these mammoths. Um, if you're not using bow or any range like that, I would use poison throwing knives against these mammoths and we bought those earlier. So poisoning these mammoths is really, um, really nice if you're doing consumables only. And then again, uh, you wanna kill this soldier on the left and then I can't help you if you get Forlorn Invaded here. This was, again, my, you know, honest confession that I don't know how to deal with Forlorn here for these uh, non-meta runs, so good luck. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we have our bow now just so I know if I'm getting Forlorn Invaded. I'm not. You want to um, bait out attacks from this guy. And just be careful because he will change the crossbow like this sometimes, and it's really scary. But you want to um, bait out the melee attacks, and then here's a perfect position that will go to the, the golem, which will open the door. And yeah, like I said, this is kind of the, uh, the best way to do it if you don't really have range. Because... It's hard to explain, but basically, there is a way to have to be able to kill that hollow at range using either throwing knives or kind of a like lower damage weapon that will slowly kind of push the soldier back closer and closer to the statue. But I'm not going to get into it in this tutorial. But yeah, if you if you do what I did here, this works for melee only and um, and the bow only stuff. So. Just be aware, obviously, of Forlorn and, uh, and your positioning. You want to make sure you're to the right of those uh, those doors, or else you'll aggro those enemies that are following us right now. This group of soldiers, they are scripted to uh, follow you when you enter the, the front doors. So yeah, if you come here up here by the throne, um, they'll de-aggro. And if you need to buy arrows, like I said, if you're doing a uh, crossbow or sh or any bow only, you want to buy these magic and lightning arrows from this NPC. Um, for us, we have nothing to do with the NPCs, so we're just going to walk by. Now, for this next part, uh, before Dragon Riders, these soldiers in front of this, uh, this door are just extremely 
tedious on this run. Um, I'm sure it's pretty bad on crossbow and bow only as well, but you just want to make sure that you kill um, one of the two. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you. You'll you'll see it. it takes a long time, but yeah. Um, these soldiers are extremely fast. They're the ones that are like the stone soldiers that um, yeah come alive. They are nasty, so just be very, very, very careful. I've lost a run to these guys as well. And this is scripted for um, that soldier to follow you, so when you open those doors, or you can do it before you open the doors, uh, just make sure you kill that soldier and don't get ganked from behind. All right, um, so for this next part, again, you want to get a headshot. Um, either one is fine to shoot. I usually shoot the one on the left. If you have a really, really strong weapon, you can potentially kill with melee only. Um, so I would kill the one on the left because that soldier doesn't have a shield. So usually is easier. But yeah, as long as you kill one of them by the door, it will activate the door and then you can go through towards Dragon Riders. But yeah, I'm just going to fast forward this part because it takes a long time. There's really nothing to say other than just don't be greedy. And if you think you have enough distance, get even more because, um, yeah, Great Bow in particular has a really, really, really long uh, time in between shots. So by the time you're done with your shooting animation, you've already been hit. <laughs> And yeah, it's better to kill one and then deal with the second one than to try to get both to low health and then, you know, kill one while the other's alive. Like, you want to make sure there's only one soldier left. All right, so we got the soldier to die next to the door, so we're in good shape now. Um, you want to have your bright bugs out because we're going to be activating the bright bug um, coming up. This is all, again, like meta, so just kill the soldier, keep going up. Uh, and like I said, we have RTSR, um, set it up earlier. And a bright bug, so we have plenty of damage. Alright, so for this next part, um, depending on which run you're doing, you want to either fire twice or three times. So when we go through this fog wall, um, I'm going to shoot two great bow bolts into the archer on the ledge, and as I'm doing that, this uh, dragon rider on the on the ground is going to be uh, it's going to be running towards me. So I fire once. That will cause uh, dragon rider to drop. Fire another. I'm out of stamina, so I have to walk. Sprint now. You'll have enough stamina to be able to sprint. Um, you keep sprinting to dodge that arrow. The third shot will always kill Dragon Rider, and then now you have to watch your stamina and make sure you roll the next attack here. Um, this should work as long as you get the timing down. If you're a little slow, depending on the RNG, this Dragon Rider might be able to hit you after that third shot to kill the other Dragon Rider, so just be very careful. And here, uh, for ranged fighting, I just like to bait out an attack, punish, see how I blow stamina. I'll wait for it to replenish and then just roll once, dodge this. Um, like I said, depending on the RNG, you may have to dodge twice, but I think it's best to have full stamina when you're gonna be um, shooting your great bow. So that way you never run out of stamina. And as you're regaining, again, you roll and then walk away, get ready to bait out another attack, and then you just rinse and repeat. 
And see here, that's the the poke attack, and it has a huge hitbox, and we're still able to no-roll it, so if you follow this correctly, you'll have plenty of space. Like here, it's just, it's so much more comfy doing it this way. Um, so yeah, if, if you follow this, Dragon Rider should be a scripted fight. Um, it does take a while, like you can see it's, you know, my damage per shot's a little low, but um, it's really, really uh, much, much more uh, predictable. So I would say the biggest problem with this fight is people will get um, too close to the wall and be stuck with the Dragon Rider sandwiched between them and, the, and a wall. It's much easier to get hit that way. Okay. Um, now, if you've made it up to this point hitless, GG. Now the real fun begins. Um, so Mirror Knight is probably the hardest, if not second hardest boss in the entire run for non-meta um, no-hit runs. The reason is, in meta no-hit runs, the fight is scripted. And you have so much damage that you're able to to kill Mirror Knight before Mirror Knight can summon, and also before Mirror Knight can do any other attack but the lightning attack. Now, fighting Mirror Knight, um, fighting Mirror Knight legit is definitely something that just takes a lot of hours. But if you follow this guide, I think you can probably cut that time. So I will go very, very slow but through Mirror Knight because I think that's probably the most beneficial um, information you'll get out of this entire guide. This and Throne Duo. So right here, like I said, we killed this ghost. Um, we're going to shoot a bolt into uh, this enemy here. You just want to make sure you go to that last line. Uh, that's perfect. And then again, one more shot will kill. If you're using the, the crossbow or light, or um, or normal bow, you probably have to shoot twice. And then the third shot would kill. So, all right. Let's uh, fast forward through this. Okay, so yeah, so like I said, the main thing about Mirror Knight, so if you, let's say you didn't have enough souls to buy those Bright Bugs before we did Trine of Winter, now is when you would buy them after Dragon Riders. You would have to set up RTSR again at the ladder, but um, if you need the extra souls, you can uh, you can buy them now. Like after, um, after Dragon Riders, when, after you pop the souls and everything, you should have enough souls to buy all three. Uh, so yeah, so the main thing is you just want to make sure that you have a bright bug for this fight. You need it if you're doing non-meta, because you just won't have enough damage. And uh, one quick thing for the great bow only run is you want to pick up this chest in the middle. It has a soul vessel and the fire seed. Um, so like I said, the, the king's ring was to the right here. Um, and that other chest has the soul vessel, which we use to respec. So if you have to respec in your run, and you can do it in the second half of the game, this is when you'd want to pick up the soul vessel. And then between now and the end of the game, if you need to respec, you have that option. Alright, so... Alright, so we're going to slow this down. So the way that you want to start this fight, and I typically do this um, now because it allows you to have a longer period where you're under bright bug. And in general, I just think it, it makes the opener a little bit more consistent. So like I said, for this first part of Mirror Knight, you just want to sprint, recover stamina, sprint, recover stamina. Depending on how much stamina you have, you may only need to stop once. Um, 
But yeah, I would say like two or three times is probably good. Just so you guarantee you don't run out. So yeah, recover stamina and I can sprint to the end now. I have Bright Bug out. Um, you also want to make sure that you have Poison Throwing Knives and Dung Pies. So I'll show you how to fight this boss with consumables only in combination with your weapon only run. So this is kind of a... Like I said, this, this Mirror Knight uh, part will just be focused around using consumables. But like I said, where I punish with the Great Bow, you can punish with your non-meta weapon. So if you're using Hand Axe, I think you can get two hits off in between. Um, if you're doing a slower weapon, yeah, you probably only would have one. If you're doing like the Dagger, you might be able to get two or three hits in between. Um, but yeah, the, the key for this, this boss that I'm going to show is just how powerful Poison proc and Toxic proc is in terms of the amount of health. So have your Bright Bug out. We're sprinting here. We have plenty of stamina. Um, go through the fog wall. So right here, so like I said, you're walking, and then here you start sprinting. So at the stairs, I would say the very bottom of these staircases is where you want to start sprinting. Start sprinting. Or I guess, no, I, I walk until then, so I lied. So you want to walk until this top stair, then you want to start sprinting. So now I start sprinting. So like, yeah, around here. And Mirror Knight will start jumping. So this, this opener is always scripted. So you want to walk straight, start sprinting around here. Mirror Knight will jump right over you. And you want to look for this, uh, this line right here. So it's about, let's see how many. So it's about, I think, three or four tiles. So let's see. So it's one, two, three, four, five, five tiles. So on the fifth line, at the end of the fifth tile, you want to use your Bright Bug. Mirror Knight will turn around. Again, Mirror Knight can't attack you right now. Now you're going to sprint. Do a quick turn. Mirror Knight will swing. Do a horizontal swing every single time. Now I punish with Great Bow. If you're punishing with your weapon, um, now is the time you get one hit, maybe even two hits. And as soon as you um, you fire or swing, you want to make sure you get really close to Mirror Knight. Now Mirror Knight usually backsteps like this in the beginning. I don't know why, but you want to make sure you follow and just stick really close. And Mirror Knight typically will do two attacks. This is the delayed stab, which again, Mirror Knight pulls back. You want to swing usually to the left or right. You don't want to swing backwards because this uh, this uh, poke or thrust will uh, will have a huge hitbox and follow. So you want to sprint um, to the left or right. Now we're seeing Mary and I do a uh, lightning attack for the no roll. So you see where I'm standing right now. Uh, you want to make sure that you're standing right in front, kind of centered. Now as Mirror Knight winds up. I see um, he's doing the like the spin lightning attack. So what we do is we just walk. You don't even have to sprint. You can just walk. Walk to the left and come back to the right. Now the hitbox is around here. So like I said, you just want to walk to the left and then you walk back and then you can fire your weapon or swing. And then you want to wait. Again, we're not doing enough damage to keep Mirror Knight in the loop. So we have to dodge every um, every attack that Mirror Knight has. So now I throw my first throwing knife. So depending on the RNG, there's some attacks that are better to punish than others. Typically, you want to let every single combo 
or if you know there's a potential for like a two hit combo to turn into a three or even four hit combo, you want to wait till you know for sure the combo is done before you throw a throwing knife. So you can get one knife between uh, these punishes. So I throw my second knife. And after you throw a knife, the poison throwing knife, you want to make sure you always start going back towards Mirror Knight. If you give Mirror Knight too much space, you get these really, really difficult attacks that you have to dodge. And um, in my opinion, it just makes this fight much more difficult. So you just always want to make sure you're standing right in front of Mirror Knight. And for this uh, vertical slam, you want to dodge back. And again, um, we're going to see another lightning attack. So we can start, or we can punish with our uh, weapon only. So strafe to the left. Sword goes over your head. You can punish now. And I'll, I'll move it up a little bit faster. And again, um, between the lightning attacks, you want to make sure you're using your poison throwing knives. So this is my third knife, I believe. Okay, I didn't have enough time and I had too much space, so I didn't want to use a knife. Another lightning attack, so I can start punishing with my great bow again. And Mirror Knight's getting close to the 75% health mark. Um, Around this health, you want to start using your poison throwing knives because that means Mirror Knight's going to summon soon. So, again, uh, throwing knife. If you want to use a throwing knife at the beginning of this attack, uh, just make sure you don't punish with the, the Great Bow. You can get two poison throwing knives off or you can get um, one Great Bow shot, but don't do both. Okay, now we see Mirror Knight's going to summon. Again, around that 60 to 70% health bar. Uh, throw poison throwing knives. You'll notice when uh, the poison procs, because obviously the health bar will start going uh, lower and lower. And then you want to shoot one great bow at the summon, or again, if you're doing uh, consumables only, you want to use either witching urns or lightning urns or throwing knives. Um, And yeah, just make sure you watch Mirror Knight and that you give enough space. Um, I tried to get a, a, a Great Bow Arrow and it missed, unfortunately. And yeah, just be aware that these pillars can be destroyed by Mirror Knight. And uh, these hitboxes on these attacks are very large. So, so yeah, if you're doing um, consumables only, just make sure that you give enough space between uh, yourself and the summon and Mirror Knight, because again, Mirror Knight's very quick. So you want to make sure that Mirror Knight's far away and that Mirror Knight's not winding up a lightning attack. For this jump, make sure you dodge horizontal um, to the vertical jumping slam. You don't want to dodge into it or backwards um, unless you have enough space behind you. So it's safe to shoot the summon after Mirror Knight does either a jump back or a lightning attack from far range. Um, and you see here the summon was too close for me to be able to shoot. So that dodge was good. Now we were using poison throwing knives for the first part of this um, the fight. For the second part we're going to be using um, dung pies, which again will induce the toxic status effect on Mirror Knight. Now it only takes four or five dung pies, depending on how quickly you can throw them. So we pick up five from the gutter, but if you hit all five, even if you do throw them with quite a bit of time in between, you should be able to get the proc off. So I dodged the jumping attack. After we killed the summon, uh, you get close to Mirror Knight again when it's safe. Again, we're going to wait for these combos. I can throw a Dung Pie because I saw the combo ended. Okay, we see it's a Lightning Attack. We're going to Strafe and no roll this. Oh, we see it's this attack, so we have to roll it. Throw another Dung Pie. 
And make sure you don't throw all five dung pies back to back or else you'll actually induce toxic on yourself. So you want to make sure that you just uh, throw one at a time or throw two at most. You don't want to throw three or four at a time. So get close again. And again, we're just waiting for these combos. I see the combo's done. I didn't feel like I had enough time to throw a dung pie, so I just got close again. Um, and for the lightning attacks like this, I would throw a dung pie and not use great bow in the second phase, just to make sure that you get that proc. So I throw a dung pie to punish instead of the normal great bow shot. I see Mirror Knight summoning again, and you can see how much health uh, Mirror Knight has, so we're going to have to go through the summon. But normally, if you get a lot of damage off in the first phase, and you don't spend too much time killing the summon, you can kill Mirror Knight while uh, Mirror Knight's summoning the second. But we didn't do a lot of damage because we were playing it very safe, so we have to fight Mirror Knight and the summon again. So, um, But that's pretty much it, so I'll just let this play out. And you can see the rest of the fight, but that is how you'd fight Mirror Knight in a non-meta run, or with consumables only. And like I said, the main thing is you just need to memorize Mirror Knight's moveset because a lot of these um, combos, like right here, that was a three hit combo. There's another um, hit that he can do to turn it into a four hit combo. So Mirror Knight has so much variety in the moveset that if you're used to doing the loop and the scripted kill, it's, it's, it's just yeah, a completely different fight. And yeah, this was probably the worst RNG you could get. Like, I got all these crazy, just non-lightning attacks back to back. <laughs> Alright, so Mirror Knight's almost dead. I think Mirror Knight summons, and I killed uh, during the summon, right? Yes, yeah, so this would have been the third summon. So yeah, you should never have to fight more than two summons. Usually you can do it in one summon if you're aggressive with your poison throwing knives, but I was being really conservative because I lost, like I said, two runs back to back to Mirror Knight last weekend. So I wanted to make sure that uh, I was able to get this boss out of the way. So that was, like I said, probably a more conservative... I would say that that fight was probably more representative of like a low damage run. Um, but even if you're using, you know, like hand axe or dagger or whatever, you should be able to kill Mirror Knight. Well, actually, a lot of the, I will say this that a lot of the time you can get away with the scripted kill, even with non meta. But like I said, this particular um, tutorial was, I would say, more for low damage um, runs, like, uh, you know, sorcery only, no leveling. Uh, you know, stuff like that. <clears throat> so Demon of Song is also going to be a, a different fight. Um, everything up to Demon of Song is the same, so I'm going to just quickly go through this. But yeah, like I said, the main thing about Demon of Song is you want to... Okay, so... The way that Demon of Song works, I learned this from J and Z, so shout out to J and Z. Uh, basically, there is a way that you can tell if you're going to get a baby jump or not. There's like a baby hop that, um, that Demon of Song can do that will end most people's runs. And people just think it's RNG, but it's not. The way that it works is there is a distance between the back of Demon of Song 
or just from Demon of Song to a wall that uh, you know the demon is is in front of. So that distance has to be greater than the distance between you and the frog. Now, if you're not following still, basically, if you're fighting the frog and the frog has uh, their back against the wall, you're probably going to get a baby hop. Now, if there's a bunch of water behind uh, Demon of Song, then you're probably in good shape if you just want to kind of a quick rule of thumb. Um, now, when you notice that the, you know, the frog has a lot of space um, between between you and him, or you and them, uh, you'll notice that the, like again, the uh, the frog will do the baby hops. Now, in the beginning of the fight, it's scripted for the frog to do two, two baby jumps. And again, that's because the AI is designed to close the distance between you and them. So you can use this to your advantage. Um, and the only, I guess, rough part about fighting Demon of Song ranged is you have to deal with the bubble attack sometimes. And it can be scary, but if you practice it enough, um, it's not too, too bad. But that's the only thing I will say is um, that is a risk in doing this strat. But like I said, I think for ranged Demon of Song, this is probably the best way to do it. If you're doing, like I said, just a normal weapon only, I would just make sure that you don't, um, you know, you don't put yourself in a situation where you can get baby jumps, but yeah. So again, this whole Amana is pretty much the same as what you would do in the meta run when you're running through here with a short bow. If anything, you have more damage now, obviously, so you can one-shot most things. Now, it's easy if you can just lock on to these lizards in a mana. Um, and if they die in one shot, that's just nice to be able to lock on because then you're guaranteed to to kill rather than trying to kind of like free aim in the water. It can, it can be difficult to see the enemies in the water. Um, the only other thing I would say is for these, uh, these, I guess, clerics, um, or mages, whatever, they will die in one hit to the headshot, just like you saw. Um, it takes two body shots with the great arrow, so just be aware that if you miss that headshot, uh, you just need to make sure you are watching your stamina, that you're able to fire that second shot and kill. Because it was actually really close in this run. I actually ate that blossom, so I would recommend eating a blossom before this part as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so I missed that great bow, and with full health, <laughs> had to kill this uh, cleric, and that was very scary. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, let's just fast forward this, because it's pretty much the same. All right, so we killed, um, you know, these mages. While you're being invaded, you want to sprint, roll through the door, close the door behind you, sprint, watch your stamina. You should be able to sprint all the way down. Okay. And then for great bow only, only at least, um, you're able to fire three great bows in the beginning. And you don't have to worry about your stamina at all, just spam until you get the third shot. You see here, here's the third shot. And where I'm standing in front of the fog wall is pretty precise too. You wanna make sure you have plenty of space to the left or right of you. I actually forgot to use the bright bug before the fight. So I used it here. You can use it here if you want. I tend to use it earlier, but this actually is better. Um, so you see here that Demon of Song does two baby hops. After you see the second one, you wanna make sure you run towards it. And Demon of Song did this, uh, attack which is again kind of like a uh 
I don't even know, like a, a gliding sprint attack. Like a... Um, whatever, like rushing attack. And here, you see I have enough space um, where Demon of Song has more space behind than the distance between me and the boss. So it's fine to do this strat where you bait out the melee attacks. Now, you'll either get the good melee punish or you'll get the Omega Hop, which is what you'll see now. So the Omega Hop, you wanna make sure, like here I, I, I roll because I was really close to the wall. So you see that hand, it didn't get too, too close, but it was pretty close to me. So just make sure that you sprint and dodge just to be safe if you do see the Omega Hop and you were right next to uh, the boss. Like I said, there's way more space um, behind the boss. So now I'm going to get the good punish. So you can fire two bolts or two arrows um, per punish. You'd probably do like three with bow only. Crossbow is probably around two. After the Omega Hop, you can only fire one great arrow. Um, so there's less time to punish after the Omega Hop, but, and here we see that it's going to do the, the rush attack again. So you want to sprint, so you want to sprint and then roll. And you always want to make sure you're going at like a, you know, 90 degree angle. You don't want to go at a weird angle. And here we see the baby hop because the distance, um, was greater between me and the boss. Another Omega Hop. Um, we're going to sprint and then dodge just to be safe. I was more than... Actually, I didn't even dodge yet. So I had more than enough distance to just no-roll it. You can fire uh, only one Great Arrow. Again, we have plenty of space between the boss and the, the wall behind the boss. So we can do this uh, melee attack close range bait. We can fire two arrows. So there's one and there's two. And again, there is plenty of space behind the boss, so you can run back up to the uh, to the hood and rinse and repeat. So luckily, we didn't have to deal with um, any bubble attacks. But like I said, if you are gonna dodge that, you just want to make sure that you dodge. Uh, you know, lateral. So again, at like that 90 degree angle that we've been doing for most of these uh, dodges. And um, yeah, I can also you know go more in depth with that at a later date too. I do I do think I'm gonna do a like in depth boss guide at some point for most of the bosses. But yeah. So here we kill Demon of Song, and uh, yeah. Like I said, the main takeaway is you just want to make sure that you keep that extra distance behind the boss. You don't want the boss to ever be against the wall. And you will never get a baby jump, I promise. Beautiful right in the eye, yeah. All right. Um, so this guy is pretty, you know, pretty easy. Just fire once, one headshot, and just keep uh, doing the chip damage. If you want to be safe, if not, you can bait out an attack um, and melee to death or whatever. Okay. So we pop souls. Um, again, there's like two different Forlorn invasions in the crypt. So just be aware there's one that is coming up. Um, and yeah, if you want to see... Uh, Forlorn Strats, Lone Wind has great guides, um, and other people have done Forlorn and Forlorn uh, tutorials. So, fire one headshot and then chip damage at these ones. Um, you're gonna kill the Hollow with the torch, and you're also gonna kill the sh the door shield um, enemy. And just make sure you have plenty of distance for the door shield enemy, as again that fight can be kind of sketchy. Alright, 
So you see here, very safe. Um, and this part as well, you wanna shoot uh, two arrows and then just wait for this magic. Just stand right here, don't stand right next to the door frame or else you could actually get hit. Sometimes they can phase through that little column pillar thing right next to the uh, that uh, like hallway. So don't wanna lose a run here. All right. So again, just watch these uh, watch these prisoners, and if you sprint around here, you're good. Uh, for this next area, so the reason I bone out, I'll, I'll slow this down. But the reason I bone out here is it resets the area. So there's a a prisoner that comes out of the ground, and will sometimes um, activate the tombstones and bells, and those will cause enemies to come out and aggro to you. So it's better just to bone out and refresh the area. And then I use fists only here to punch the boulder or the rock. So you punch this one right here. Uh, watch that bell, don't get too close to it. Punch this one, don't accidentally punch the bell right next to you on the left. Make sure you don't stand in front of that statue we just went around. Make sure you always go behind it. Come up here, shoot a headshot, and then shoot one more. Should be able to kill with a uh, crossbow and um, a normal bow as well. Now there is a forlorn invasion coming up, so if you can, you probably sh should shoot these rocks below to the left here and in the section you just came from but I YOLO'd because, you know, smile. Um, but yeah, so here, uh, it's hard to see because it's stupid pausing, but. Here. So yeah, for that, for this section, there's a spot that you're aiming for. And for some reason with the great arrow has a way bigger hitbox. So it actually causes both to turn, which is really bad. So if you're using like a bow only or crossbow only, you should be able to, um, to shoot here and it will only turn the guy on the left. But yeah, it's like right here. Like there is a, uh, basically there's like a um, an archway and you wanna shoot like right here. I would say it's, I don't know, about like 30 degrees. If this is like a, you know, the line you're kind of using. So like right around here, you want to shoot. So, or I guess here, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you shoot like right around there, this enemy on the left will turn and then the enemy on the right will stay straight, which makes the, the gap that you're running between much easier. So you can see here I'm sprinting fully. Um, and I just keep sprinting. Now this one shouldn't aggro this quickly, so I'd actually dodge. But if you only, um, you know, turn the the one the shield enemy on the left, you shouldn't have to deal with this meme. That was really scary. So you know, just be aware of using the great bow. That happens consistently where they both turn. So I guess technically you could use the short bow as a tool for that section, but I don't know. I just felt like it was kind of stupid to use a short bow when you've literally done everything else with a great bow. So I, I, I didn't personally want to use it, but I think you technically could. So now we're going to bright bug. Um, Veldstad is pretty much the same as meta. It's just much longer. Now you can use poison throwing knives during the phase two transition. I didn't here. Um, but if you need some extra damage, if you're doing like a really, really low damage run, that's what I would recommend. But All right, so again, the key for doing Veldshat no roll is you want to keep an eye on the on like the the types of uh, you know horizontal attacks that Veldshat is doing. 
So you can get one arrow off the start um, and then dodge. And again, you want to make sure that you you fire your, you know, your bow after either two horizontal swipes or the double handed swipe. Never after this. So if, if Veldshed rushes you and you have to, um, you do have to roll, never shoot after a roll. You only want to shoot after doing a no roll strat. So here you can see anytime I roll, I don't shoot. So I only will punish after no rolling. Here I'm going to roll again just to be safe. And I'm waiting for another attack. I can punish this. So you just want to make sure that your spacing is correct. Um, this is a pretty small arena. I know it looks like you have a lot of space, but with the pillars and everything, this arena is really trash. <laughs> so just be aware. Um, like right now, there's more space between me and Veldshed than between Veldshed and the wall behind. Uh, right here, now I'm kind of getting cornered, right? So I'm kind of right with my back against the wall. So I'm going to... Um, start moving towards the other side, but I see that Velsha is doing the uh, the ranged attack. So this attack right here, you can get two punishes off. Um, so you want to kind of bait that out. And again, Velsha will do that attack if you give a lot of space between you and the boss. So again, just make sure that you always have space behind you when you're fighting Velsha. So you can do the no roll strats. Right here is perfect. Look how much space we have. Look how much time we have. And boom, good RNG. There's another punish. I kind of, you know, I had enough time, but I was scared, so I didn't punish there, but I could have punished again. All right, so yeah, like I said, um, you know, phase two isn't that different from phase one. There is a follow-up that Velsha can do that's pretty nasty, so just make sure that you're not, you know, right next to Velsha if you don't have to be. And yeah, that's that. All right, so... Guardian Dragon is kind of a messy split. So yeah, I'm going to kind of fast forward. So I end up buying some more Homeward Bones and some Skulls. And I level. Um, so I'll show you what I do here. So I got more arrows. Um, so, you, so I use Skulls um, just to make it comfier. But yeah, I just want to throw a Skull to the left there and the ogre will be attracted to it and you don't even have to dodge anything. Um, so if you're worried that you're really, really deep in a run, just buy skulls, they're like 300 each. Um, you can kill or not kill this enemy. It's like great knight or the king's knight, but make sure you have king king's ring equipped if you're not gonna kill. So that way you start activating the door and then you can kind of just wait it out. There's 10 poison throwing knives right here that I'm gonna pick up. I'd recommend picking these up if you're going to use them for Throne Duo, um, or if you want to use them for uh, for Giant Lord or Ancient, Ancient Dragon, but or Guardian Dragon. It's up to you though. There is a Bright Bug and Aldi's Keep as well. I don't get it in this run, but it's free. Um, again, I can show that in another tutorial, but not today. So we want to go in this room. I forgot to set up RTSR. So normally what you do is you get in that room before you pull that lever, you want to sprint back and go to the the ramp or the staircases and you want to use gravity to, uh, to trigger RTSR. So I'm going to skip ahead because I have to redo this section. So this is the second time around and this is how you're supposed to properly do it. But I was nervous and I like completely forgot to set up RTSR. Okay, so here, normally, like I said, you get to that lever, or the pulley, and that will despawn the invader. And then right now, just make sure you have the cat ring off, 
and you just walk off this ledge. You can go much further than I was doing it, and you'll get more fall damage. Um, it is kind of exponential, so just make sure that you don't go to the very top and drop down, because I think you will die, depending on uh, your health. So I just do the really safe strat, but yeah, now we have RTSR. So again, for Ancient Dragon, or for Guardian Dragon, you either want to have RTSR plus Bright Bug, or sometimes you can do the fight without Bright Bug, depending on your damage output. Uh, but I would definitely use a Bright Bug if you if you have. Um, and yeah, this let's just skip through this part because I, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just be aware that you don't want to have to bone out. Because <laughs> I actually had three uh, three ogres on me. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to use our Bright Bug. And I use Lightning Urns for this. Um, you can use Lightning Urns. You can use Poison Throwing Knives. You can even use uh, Dung Pies if you had them. But you just want to make sure... Here, actually, let me, let me restart this. This is kind of fast. So for the opener, you want to make sure you get a headshot. So if you're doing melee weapon only, you want to do like two punishes if possible um, while the dragon is waking up. So here I do a headshot. 766 damage is very significant. So you want to get that headshot if you're doing a, a bow only run. This attack, you can just uh, sprint like that. Uh, this fire breath attack, you always want to sprint to roll at that kind of 45 degree angle. And then here I can throw one lightning urn. Again, you can use magic urns. You could use throwing knives. Um, throwing knives are a little bit harder, but they're faster. So it's easier to miss with throwing knives, but you have, uh, I guess, less downtime in between throws. So you can do two, uh, two great bows here. And again, we're just trying to bait out this fire attack. So you want to stand around this uh, position. We see another fire attack. We're going to roll just to be safe. Throw a lightning urn. And again, we're trying to bait out the stomp that the dragon can do. Um, you can do one lightning urn safely. Um, sometimes you can get two off depending on how quickly you can get uh, to the foot after the fire breath attack, but if you want to be super safe, just do one consumable. Make sure you can get a headshot when you're when possible. Alright. Again, when you see the the dragon raise the head and the neck, you know the fire breath attack is coming. It's just keeping up an eye out for that visual cue. So we're actually gonna get a stomp here. And watch this. So see how the dragon turned? Oh actually we don't. You gotta be really careful because that dragon will turn and all of a sudden you're next to the tail. And you don't even realize it too, because it's that quick. And then Dr Guardian Dragon will do the tail swipe and it has a huge hitbox. And it kills so many runners because they usually are never behind Guardian Dragon. You know, you're always in front. But when you're trying to bait out the stomp, sometimes you can end up a little bit too far back. And then all of a sudden, you're just dead from a tail swipe that you couldn't even see coming. <laughs> so yeah, you want to stand kind of by the pinky toe of the dragon. Like I said, this like third, smaller flaw. Um... And you can throw one, one lightning urn between uh, between attacks. So you can get sometimes like, you know, two or three stomps in a row. For this fight, I think I only get one or two. And yeah, just make sure that you don't get caught too far to the left. Because for some reason, the dragon always starts either on the left or the middle of uh, the, 
of, of the dragon, like anatomically, so. And that attack right there has a really big, or a bigger hitbox than you think, so just make sure you're not standing too close to Guardian Dragon when they do the uh, the fly onto the wall, or the cage, the wall of the cage. Um, and that's that. But yeah, you just gotta be patient with this fight. It's very, very tricky. I've died at a distance PB to this in Great Bow only, and then also um, Hand Axe only. So like I said, for non-meta runs, Guardian Dragon is very difficult. Usually, um, people underestimate the boss, so definitely make sure you get your practice in, because again, this is very, very far into the run. And after this, it's Giant Lord, which should be a free boss. So I would say once you get past Guardian Dragon, there's no excuse um, to get hit between now and Throne Duo if you uh, if you follow the guide correctly. So I just grabbed the Age Feather from Emerald Herald. Um, you need it for the Giant Lord strat that everyone hates. <laughs> um, so yeah, just grab it. Now again... There's nothing new to this next part for the Ashen Heart, so uh, just be careful of this first enemy. They have a magic attack that comes out of the tip of the sword, so if you uh, if you aren't careful, it's very, very quick too. You can get killed by it. It has insane tracking, so just make sure that you always have the rocks kind of in between you and the, and the enemy. All right. So as you see here, I just give myself plenty of space. Um, and then, you know, if you're doing, I would say if you're doing melee only on those guys, I actually don't even know how you would do that, but you can use poison uh, arrows. I mean, well, obviously if you're using arrows, it's easy, but if you're not using um, a bow or a crossbow, um, I would personally probably use either poison throwing knives or um, you could probably use witching urns or lightning urns, but yeah, just be very careful, like I said, about those magic attacks. And then this, you know, dragon lord um, is super annoying to deal with. So just make sure that you give yourself plenty of space. Don't be greedy. This guy is very quick, so. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna shoot this dude over and over. Um, and this should be the last shot. One more, boom. So yeah, just if you need the space, you can go all the way down the stairs. Normally you can kill the enemy around here, but yeah. It's okay if you miss a few shots, just don't get greedy. And then, yeah, now um, it's pretty much free until Giant Lord. So we go to Force to Fallen Giants. Um, we're going to set up RTSR using this ladder we went down, but before you have to kill this enemy, this enemy, um, and just to be safe, kill this enemy too. And then you can go set up RTSR. Now there's a Forlorn Invasion coming up, so you want to make sure that um, you have your Aged Feather out. And again, if that grays out, you know you're being invaded by Forlorn. If you get invaded by Forlorn here, you want to actually go to the the elevator that goes down to Last Giant and go through the Last Giant fog wall. And basically, like we all know, there's that scary um, enemy down by the Last Giant fog wall. So you go into the fog wall, you want to sprint like all the way to the end of the arena and then bone out, or you want to turn around and shoot that hollow because that hollow will aggro to you after um, Forlorn disappears because then the the fog that was protecting you for a few seconds will slowly dissipate since you already killed Last Giant, and then the uh, hollow will come and ruin your whole run. <laughs> so yeah, around here, like when you enter this area, this is where Forlorn will activate. So yeah, just watch your feather when you go into here. And then like I said, you can either kill that enemy or just activate the door with the King's Ring and wait 
and just dodge uh, swings. So for Giant Lord, um, all you have to do is come into this corner, have the aged feather out, and just watch. Just uh, just spectate. Have a little uh, you know, I don't know. Go to the bathroom. Uh, go walk your dog. No, but seriously, just watch. Uh, watch for the meteor to try to do some damage. So if you see the meteor doing damage to that um, that giant, then you know that you're good. If let's say two or three meteors go by and no damage is taken by these giants, then you just want to bone out and just go uh, back into the arena each time. And this is why I always get memed on for having an hour giant lord split. So yeah, we see here. I think this is this bad. I forget this one. Yeah, I think this one's bad too. But yeah, just don't be afraid to to bone out because. IMO, you've spent three hours, three and a half hours getting to this point. So why would you throw the run on something so silly? But again, if you're going for speed, do not use the strat. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. But if you don't care about time, then this is the safest way to do Giant Lord. Um, so these two giants are actually pretty close. Boom, we see some damage. And just be careful. So I activated my feather and was just waiting to press yes because, yeah, I, I just saw this and was like, nope. So, um, yeah, the real tutorial starts now. But yeah, it, I, if any time you see something that sketches you out, just bone out. Just get just get out of there. Um, so I think this one actually worked. So yeah, so you see that, yeah, the the giant took some meteor damage. So that's a good start. Um, second meteor also gave damage. Now with with after two meteors, it's only one or two shots with the great bow. So that's what we're looking for. Like right here, the giant has too much damage. Now perfect, one shot. Now we wait for the great or the meteor. Start sprinting. Go up these stairs. You don't need this aesthetic, I just pick it up for the memes. Alright, so a meteor happened, but I was waiting for the head to fall. Okay, head fell. Next meteor, now we start sprinting. You want to go to this giant's corpse. Um, you can use a bright bug here, but you want to wait for the meteor before you approach giant lord. Um, you're just going to be using bow. So again, uh, just dodge or roll and then punish. Only one shot per punish, only one roll. Rinse and repeat. If you get a, an, a sign or a message that says the uh, the memory is fading or something, or you're, you know your time in the memory has come, you can get teleported out. Um, if that happens, just redo the fight. But like I said, that's why if you wait two or three meteors in the beginning of this area, and you still haven't killed a giant, it's best to bone out just so you reset the timer. Uh, I don't know that strat, Chicky. All right, so yeah, so Giant Lord's done, and now for this particular run, we're gonna respec. Um, so if you're doing consumables only and you've been doing it the whole time, you've already been leveling faith, um, so you don't have to respec. But if you're using, um, so basically like. So for the reason why I did I chose to do consumables only is because a I, I was allowed to, and b you're able to get um, quicker punishes whereas the great bow on throne duo is just so horrible that I can't even imagine uh, trying to do like actually like only great bow the whole run with no consumables like without offensive consumables I would not have done this run. Um, so yeah, so basically the reason we're respecking is because when you do like 55 or 50 faith, you get a you increase your lightning bonus damage when you increase faith because miracles are based on lightning. Um, so you want to have uh, as much faith as possible. And then again, we just take away 
the 40 strength and put it into faith. So that's all we did in the respec is basically, um, you know, we just took, you know, 40 levels of strength and put it towards faith. So yeah, you only have five faith by default for swordsman starting class. So, and yeah, just make sure you don't forget to put the levels back into strength and dex. So you want 10 strength, 25 dex if you're doing great bow with the alone great bow. And then yeah, just pump faith and then you should be good. All right. All right, so we're gonna go to Throne Duo. So I'm gonna, all right, so to set up RTSR here, by the way, you just have to jump, um, jump off this uh, part two times, right? So you wanna sprint, you'll take that much damage. And again, line up sprint. And two of those should be enough. And if you don't do enough uh, damage to yourself, just put on um, the Seldora set and you'll increase your fall damage. All right, so we're almost done with the tutorial and we're actually only two and a half hours in, so this is good. So actually we finished this tutorial without having to do it in two parts. So I'm happy about that. So anyway, we're gonna do a in-depth throne duo fight. So this will probably be like a 10 minute, 15 minute tutorial. So yeah. Um, Anyone who's been asking, I would say, yeah, if you're looking for advice on Throne Duo, this is going to be good. You can also watch my SL1 um, tutorial, and I go in-depth on Throne Duo as well. But I think I have a little bit more knowledge now, so I think this is going to be like the new go-to when I point people to uh, Throne Duo. All right. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go 0.5. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is consumables only, right? You want to throw two lightning urns at defender to start. If you throw three, you might die because depending on your position and RNG, Watcher can sometimes meme. So throwing two will guarantee that there's no memes. So I throw two lightning urns. I'm watching obviously both of them and usually they are idle like this at the start just make sure you're not too close to the edge usually watcher will attack first so right here as per plan sprint twice now on this attack normally what you want to do is you only want to, to roll once i actually messed this up so i'm surprised i didn't get punished but what you want to do on that attack with Watcher is you roll once and then out sprint the uh, the second and then you throw a lightning urn. And if you only roll once, you have enough time to punish safely. You may have to dodge immediately after, depending if Watcher rolls back or does like the backflips, but you will always have enough time to be able to roll after you throw. So now defenders in front, which is a little scary, so see how I rolled here and immediately have to roll again because Watcher was aggroed as well. So just be careful if Defender is in front of Watcher. You always want to have Watcher in front of Defender if you can. Now here I see Watcher is with their shield up so I can throw a Lightning Urn knowing I'm not going to be punished by Watcher while punishing Defender. Again, Defender is in front. Now I see Watcher do this uh, ranged attack. Now as soon as I roll... Defender starts winding up, so just be careful when you're dodging um, that range attack from Watcher that you have enough space between Defender, because if you have to roll it, it's best to roll that attack diagonally. You don't want to roll back. Um, and by rolling diagonally, sometimes you can still end up being too close to Defender. So they both attacked, and I have enough space, so I throw a Witching Urn, or a Lightning Urn. Um, I throw another one because Watcher is her shield up and Defender just um, attacked me. Watcher's um, doing this BS attack 
That was actually an early roll. That was a good second roll. Um, I wouldn't recommend throwing a, a lightning urn there. I think that was a risky punish. Right here. Uh, there's enough space, but I think it was a good decision to not punish. Right here, I'm trying to bait out a defender attack. Watcher's aggro to me, so I can't punish. Watcher does this attack, which can do either two or three, three swipes. She does two. Not safe to punish. Again, Watcher doesn't do the backflip, so that was the correct decision. All right, Watcher is doing this. Boom. If I was not as far from Watcher, I would have died. So let's just watch this one more time. If this is the right one, I might have been too far forward. I might have been too far forward, I don't know. So, actually... Alright. But yeah, um... Let's see. So, dodge, sprint, turn around, throw a lightning urn. Dodge, they're both swinging, which is fine because they're in sync. If they're not in sync, make sure you have plenty of space. Um, okay. Watcher swings. It's not safe because uh, or Watcher didn't have her shield up and she did the, the ranged attack. I gave enough space between me and Defender. I can punish because Watcher just did the backflips. I'm going to dodge this. Watcher has her shield up, so I should be safe, but not in a good position to uh, to punish with an urn. I dodged the delayed stab. Watcher doesn't backflip. It's not safe to punish. That attack has a lot of range, so we um, give enough space. Okay. We, uh, we did the correct rolls, but I just felt that Defender was aggroed. And in phase two, Defender doesn't have a shield. So normally it's safer to punish Watcher during phase one because Defender is usually more passive. So just make sure that when you uh, punish Watcher, because Watcher is actually, in my opinion, more difficult to punish with consumables only. You just want to make sure that you have plenty of space between you and Defender. And also Watcher, because I would say you're more likely to get hit by Watcher while defending Watcher. Okay, so this, if you outspace by sprinting, it's safe to punish this uh, jump attack from Watcher. However, if you roll twice instead of roll and then sprint, you don't have enough time to punish Watcher. Here, I see that Defender's wound up, so I have to be careful of that, and I dodge Watcher at the same time. Backflip from uh, Watcher. I could have punished, but I think Defender was a little too close for me, so I, I played it safe, which I think was the right choice there. Okay, again, you want Watcher in front. Watcher's in front. We dodged the delayed thrust. All right, Watcher did a sidestep, so it's not safe to punish. Shield is up, which is good, but they're still too close. So we're gonna walk. Hopefully, Watcher will aggro again. All right, this positioning is not great. Um, here, boom. I had to dodge Defender's attack, and Watcher was wound up. So that was actually really bad positioning on my part. Um, this punish, I think, was not safe. <laughs> uh, so I would not do that. Roll, sprint, turn around, throw urn. Backflip is even better. There's enough space, but what? But Defender isn't um, actively attacking. Now, I was tempted to throw. You saw I locked on, but I saw Watcher instantly aggro, so I decided to not, which was the right decision. Um, Watcher backflips. So I could have thrown um, an urn at Defender at that time, but I thought he was a little too close. So I actually got lucky on the buff. So while the defender was buffing, Watcher was plenty of distance, so it was completely safe. 
Now, if Watcher does a backflip, I can punish. Nope, it's just a, a backstep, so it's not safe. Dodge the delayed poke. Bait out an attack from Defender. We see the backflip, which means I'm safe to punish Defender. Throw the urn. Dodge this. Looked kind of close, but there is plenty of time to dodge. Watcher has her shield up. Now Watcher is doing this move. I didn't um, have enough space, so I didn't no-roll it. Now it's not safe until she backflips, which she does. We throw the urn. Got lucky on the tracking. We want Watcher to be closer to us. This is good. We outspaced Defender's attack. We only rolled once. We outsprinted. We threw an urn. Got the sidestep, which is unfortunate. I made the right choice to go the opposite direction because I have more space. Dodge. I dodged again because it was just really weird um, positioning for me. Watcher is buffing. Um, hey, Inuluk. I appreciate the word, kind words. Um, all right, I saw Watcher do the ranged attack, and luckily I was far enough from Defender to be able to dodge it. Um, again, we want Watcher to be closer to us, so I always will try to get in a position where Watcher is closer to me. Dodge once, dodge twice. Defender's attacking, I have to dodge a third time. Um, I'm safe to punish because Watcher did backflips. Throw one Lightning Urn. Now, Watcher has a little bit more health than I would like. So before I finish off Defender, I want to get one more Urn on Watcher. Good positioning. We have plenty of space. We can out-sprint it. It's safe to punish this if you sprint. The backflips mean I could have um, punished Defender, but since Defender wasn't actively attacking, I wanted to be safe. Dodge. Sprint and out-space. We can do our last punish on Watcher. Perfect health. Defender's coming in. Dodge. Watcher's going to attack now. I dodged a little early. I was scared. So I dodged twice because I, do I dodged too early. Watch for the backflip. We get the backflip. Try to get Defender to attack. He doesn't. Okay, the sidestep's even more dangerous. All right, they're both aggroing. Make sure you try to out-sprint. Defender, if you need to, to dodge like I did, just make sure that you dodge early enough to be able to dodge Watcher's attack. We finish off Defender because we had enough space to throw the urn. The last dodges, again, dodge, sprint, throw. And there you go. GG. Alright. It's a lot of talking. So yeah, if you if you want to know what goes through my head when I'm playing, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. That's exactly like, you know, play by play. So that's what you want to be looking for when you do this fight. So hopefully that helps you guys. Um, and I think that what I just explained is also relevant to meta runs, but it's especially relevant to non-meta. Now, why am I throwing lightning urns into the sky? What I'm doing is I'm making it so that a lightning urn will will hit Nishandra um, right after the cutscene. So sometimes you can get two, but most of the time you just end up getting one, which is perfect. It's like an extra little damage. Um, so you want to sprint towards Nishandra and then sprint away. Uh, we can probably watch this on normal. But again, just keep an eye on the orbs. You just want to make sure you have enough space. Um, and you always want to be on you're right, Nishandra's left of the laser for the vertical laser. Um, so this is the horizontal laser. So you want to unlock and sprint over that laser. Again, if you're using range, then you should be getting punishes off every time here. If you're not using range, you could probably throw poison lightning or poison uh, knives if you have them. If not, um, I would just wait until Nishandra comes here and then you can start punishing with your melee weapon. Um, and again, you want to kind of keep this amount of space between you and Chandra, and she will most likely do this laser. Sprint, dodge to be safe. If consumables only, you just throw one lightning urn, then they throw the second lightning urn, wait for the laser, sprint, dodge, one lightning urn, walk away because the laser's gone, throw your second, rinse and repeat. 
And like I said, if you're not using range, you want to get as much damage as you can right now, especially because there's no orbs. So if you see the orbs um, going away, then that's the time to punish the most. And again, you want the Chandra close to a wall or corner when she does her second orbs, and then she won't be able to do as many. Here, she's, just, she's still got off three. Sometimes you only get one or two. Um, but I have plenty of space, and again, just punishing these lasers. Um, and uh, yeah, what's up, Sex? So yeah, just make sure you unlock and then roll these lasers. And yeah. So that's it. Um, if anyone has any specific questions, like I said, just message me here on Discord. This guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is it. And uh, I think that, like I said, I think this, this guide is gonna be helpful to people who are doing um, anything that's like non-rapier. So if it's a, a, a ranged only run or a weapon only run, then this is this is the guide you want to watch. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps someone. Uh, it was actually not too bad. I mean, we're almost at three hours here. So so yeah. Um, and yeah, if you want to join the Discord, um, go right ahead. And like I said, if anything tournament related, um, we also we'll talk about in there. So, so yeah. Um, so I will, I will post this hopefully the team hit list. So yeah. Um, anyone who's doing a uh, weapon only or non meta should, um, should be able to get something out of it, but yeah. Um, I think that's it for me. And like I said, I'm going to end the tutorial here and I'm also going to end the stream, but I will be back for a second stream later today in a few hours. So, uh, hope to see you guys then. We'll do some Elden Ring routing. 